Hey guys, welcome back to Cora's Workshop. So today we're going to build some shadow boxes for some jerseys I had laying around the house. Stick around and I'll show you how we did it. So the reason we're going to build these shadow boxes is because me and my wife both played college sports. So we have some old jerseys that we had laying around that we want to put up and kind of make them look a little bit nicer. Since these shadow boxes were going to be for a display, I wanted them to look a little bit nicer. So I grabbed some poplar boards and ripped them down to size on the table saw. To make everything a little more accurate, I attached an auxiliary fence to my miter saw. Now you can make these same cuts on a table saw, I'm just more comfortable with my miter saw making these cuts. Once I finished cutting everything to size, I went ahead and did an initial sanding. This is going to save me some time on the back end. I need to cut a groove into the board, so this way it will accept the plexiglass. To set up for the cut, I used my combination square to get the exact height I needed on the table saw blade. Once I had everything set up, I ran all the boards through. Now it's important to make sure you run them all through on the same side so that way the groove all aligns so that way when it's time to put in the plexiglass, it all matches up. Once I had the groove cut, I needed to put a rabbit in these boards so that way it would accept the quarter inch panel for its backing. Now you can cut this rabbit in a couple different ways. You can use your table saw with a regular blade a router bit with a rabbiting bit or a dado stack. I chose to go with a dado stack because it was the easiest thing for me to do. A little trick to help with the sizing of your plexiglass. I know for me when I was first starting out this was a bit of a challenge trying to figure out exactly what the measurements were. Whatever you use to set the height of your table saw blade, make sure it's the same for your groove and your rabbit. This way, once you cut everything and you're starting to dry fit it, as long as your plexiglass fits inside your rabbit, it'll fit inside the groove as well. So just a little tip that helped me out a lot. When you're doing a rabbit cut, it's typically gonna go along your fence. So to keep your original fence that your table saw came with from messing up, you're gonna to wanna to add an auxiliary fence. Now when cutting this rabbit, make sure you pay attention to which side you have the board on. Cause the worst thing you could do is cut the rabbit on the same side as the groove. Cause now that means this board is no longer gonna be useful for this project. Once I finished cutting out the rabbits and the grooves, I went ahead and pre-finished these boards. The finish I'm going to use is shellac. I'm just going to use the spray-on version. I'm pre-finishing simply because I know once I get it all assembled, it's going to be very hard to get those corners for sanding and spraying. So it's just going to make my life a lot easier. I end up using about three coats of shellac, sanding with 220 grit sandpaper in between. To measure for the back panel, I went ahead and did a dry fit of the shadow box. This way I was able to measure out exactly what I needed and then I can cut it down to size. Now even though I had the measurements, I went ahead and cut it a little oversized. This way I could sneak up on the cut and get an exact fit.
I finished the back panel, I traced out the shape on the plexiglass I had and then cut the size off camera. Now that I have my parts cut out, it's time to do some assembly. Assembly was pretty easy since I had pretty much everything already set up. So what I did was remove some of the tape from the dry fitted shadow box so this way I could take the top off and lay everything flat. Once I had it all laid flat, I added glued all the mitered edges, clamped it back up so this way I can add in my plexiglass. Once I had the plexiglass where exactly I needed it to be, I added a large clamp so that way I could add the top, add some more glue, and tape them all together. Now a fancier clamp you could use is a band clamp. I just find that blue tape is cheaper and it holds it together just as well. dry, I needed to add some splines to the mitered corners so that way they're a little stronger. So I grabbed my spline jig, brought my shadow box over to the table saw, and started setting up for the cut. Once my blade height was set, I went ahead and cut two spline slots on each corner of the shadow box. is some walnut. I had it left over from some other projects and I figured it'd be a good time to use them now. Once the glue for the splines had dried, I went ahead and cut them off using my multi-tool. You can cut off these splines using many different tools. Some people use band saws, pull saws or whatever else they have. This is what I had to use and I think it worked pretty good. Once I had everything cut off for the splines, I went ahead and grabbed my orbital sander and some 120 grit sandpaper and I went ahead and sanded them down until they were flush. Once I had everything sanded flush, I went ahead and grabbed some 220 grit paper and I sanded everything down until it was smooth to the touch. I'm going to use on the outside is the same for the inside, some spray on shellac. Now it's really easy to use because it dries in about 20 or 30 minutes. In between coats I would sand it down with 220 grit just so that way I can get that glassy smooth feel. Once the finish had enough time to dry I went ahead and flipped it over and then added some picture frame turn buttons. So this way I can always have access to the shadow box in case I need to change something. Off camera, I went ahead and added some heavy duty D-ring picture hangers. I wanted to make sure these weren't going to fall off the wall. Now that 
I've got the jerseys put in and everything assembled, I installed it on the wall off camera. Alright guys, let me know what you think. Now I still have a few more jerseys I want to hang up, but I'll get to those when I get a chance. If you like the way these shadow boxes turned out, make sure you leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a video.